The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen if you your mind. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to the MSC on 117.8. It's Tuesday, October 15th, and we are ready to start this day and this week together with the Lord. All right, so how is everyone doing? <laughs> uh, first things first, uh, I will be honest. Um, I don't know how your guys' uh, weekend was, but, you know, um, as I mentioned last week, I was going up to uh, Georgia, or I was, like, thinking of it. Um, actually, I guess I don't, I don't think I mentioned this probably by this point, but I did mention that a hurricane was coming to uh, Florida, and I think many of you may have seen it on the news uh, because... The damage was quite extensive and it's like it was within two weeks of the the last one um and so that was kind of like what was going on uh, for me last week but since that time uh i actually you know <laughs> evacuated uh, out of the state um to where you know the, uh, there are other members uh, up in georgia um and you know it i don't think i expected that at this time last week and so it, it was kind of like uh, very unexpected, but many things happened in that time, many great things. Um, and uh, I'll be honest, like right before coming, I didn't think that I'd have time to record uh, this week. And um, in light of like, you know, the things that we've experienced in this history and reflecting back on the past, uh, you know, I know that like kind of recording things, like both in terms of like, you know, video and audio recording, but also in terms of writing, uh, to re reflect back on events is very important. So on my way back from uh, Georgia this past weekend, uh, I was like kind of narrating and recording on video uh, all like some of the various things that happened over last uh, week. But when I went to check the audio uh, this morning and hoping to use that for the MSE segment here on Tuesday, uh, it didn't capture <laughs> so uh, you know there's like this 40 minute video file of me just talking to the screen and there's no audio <laughs> and so um, you know here I am you know um, getting to speak to you guys but you know in, in one in one sense yes while that might be very disappointing um, I get to you know reflect on it once again and maybe to share something more specific because in part of the video file it was kind of general and um, I was intending it for like all audiences for all intents and purposes and it wasn't specifically to do with the morning star drive uh, but there were a, a lot of things that happened last week that is even more specific to you know our viewership uh, here on on the MSD and so um, you know we can kind of maybe get more closer to home for some of those things so I'm thankful for God that you know I once again have this chance and I will say that this is probably I think I say this every week, but this is probably the busiest that, that I, I've been. Um, and yet still, of course, like taking the time out to do this, I think this is some of the more important things that, that we get to do. So uh, I'm very excited for it, too. Um, yeah, with that in mind, yeah, like as we mentioned, uh, I was up in Georgia. And, you know, for, for many of you guys who aren't from the United States or like are not familiar with the area, uh, Georgia is the place that we had the soccer tournament in here in American Providence about two years ago. Um, and we have many great members uh, in this kind of region. And, you know, while we were there, you know, shout out to the members in Georgia. Um, and some of you guys know some of them from uh, the MSD as, as well with Chelsea and Aaron, you know, being over there. And also uh, Michelle was visiting from South Carolina. So just wanted to uh, shout out to Michelle, too. Uh, it was kind of unexpected. Like, I don't I didn't think that we would uh, we thought of uh, uh, being able to see each other and crossing paths like while in Georgia. Uh, but it's really great to see people who support the MSD, uh, both in in the making of and in like participating in all the discussions so frequently so it was a very um uh, a great time a, a very happy time to be able to have that um yeah and so like a lot of various things happen and i think the freshest thing on our minds and I, i'm not sure yet if rachel talked about it either but uh yesterday we started a 21-day prayer condition for the second generation here in American Providence. And, uh, you know, I was praying about this this morning. And the reason why this, uh, like I'm, I'm mentioning this first and foremost, is it's kind of a twofold thing. And I, I'm kind of curious, like, what you guys think, right? Like, um, for me, 
yes second generation is important <laughs> i'm trying to i'm trying to phrase this in the best way right it's not to say that they're not important uh but it's definitely not to say that any one department any one person any one group no matter how big or how small or how um like i don't know <laughs> how like how pressing their needs are it doesn't mean that they're like the only focus right and and uh, I, th I think everyone knows that, but there are times where it feels like, you know, the focus is on one department or so. And, you know, that's happened in various uh, times across province history. Uh, but one thing for me, like while we were starting this prayer condition and not just with the second in particular, but yeah, like, like we mentioned with any department, um, f the reason why I pray for them and the reason why I do anything for them is because I feel that taking care of this department and taking care of these people is how we care for the Lord and for this history, right? Like the thing I was praying this morning, um, you know, is that yes, yes, God, by praying for the second gen, but also by praying for all of our members, uh, it's actually, you know, doing what Jesus told even, uh, you know, Apostle Peter, right? Like when he appeared to him in spirit and, and said to take care of his sheep. And I think that's always been the motivation for me, right? So I'm not just taking care of, of, of second gen, of SS, because I'm like, oh, like, you know, like, I, I you know, these kids are, are so important, right? Like, my heart is entirely for, you know, these, these, these people and such. But no, it's, 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 it's the same thing as how I feel for a campus or for a career and for uh, the Blessed Family and for the JS, right? We care for each of them because that's the greatest way that we can show love, not just to that department, but to the Trinity and to each other, right? Like, so this is an interesting conversation, right? Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to see if this example paints it better, right? And so, like, um, there's, there's, there's two ways that this is kind of manifested and uh, and i'm curious to know what you guys think right for for one thing like one way to describe it is like let's say uh, for me one of the reasons why i take care of a lot of people at my church is actually for my family right so that that might be interesting i take care of other people for my family right and that's something that you know i have made a habit of doing for a very long time um, and it's kind of like it's it, there's like multiple reasons for like one is that like I feel like I'm doing it on behalf of my family because to a certain extent they can't take care of people in the same way that I can. Of course, my family does and stuff like that, too. But um, I feel like in some capacity, I'm much closer to the ground in some ways so that I can do things in the way that they can't. So in a way that I'm like an arm for my family, right? A hand, right? That that can go out and extend itself from my family to take care of them. Um, and also, right, like I feel that the greatest way to love my family is to love these others, right? To Because it's so intricately connected, right? If I'm helping out these others, if I'm helping out the other church members, the other departments, then it comes back to my family. And, and I don't mean coming back to my family in this like give or take, uh, push and pull kind of way, but more like it's making the whole better so that the individual people um, also have it better too, right? So if I take care of the JS department, it helps out the second gen and it helps out the kids because how could it not, right? Like if you uh, are fixing a problem in one area, when we have this shared home of the church and when we have the shared environment how could it not improve something so that's kind of been my mentality in, in a lot of ways so whenever there is occasion to help people i think my draw is, is that because i see how much the smaller thing is part of the larger picture at, at least specifically in this uh, case of helping people and, and i think i allude to this and this is part of the the conversation we can have too and that sometimes i think that that leads to misunderstanding um and i don't know if this is something that you experience or or uh tangentially this is something that you have gone through too but uh i guess there is like like things that does happen in this mix like sometimes right even while i have this mentality right even while helping others maybe actually sometimes you end up neglecting the people 
who who are the the people you intended to help, right? So like in the in the example of my family, even though I intended to uh, help my family by taking care of these other people, maybe I spent more time with um, these others and. It's, it's not about more or less time, but that I failed because of that to take care of my family. And maybe this is like a, a question that like or, or like a, a topic that hits closer to home for many people, because I, I know that this is something that many uh, uh, individuals um, in this history and in their faith have have gone through too, right? Because of taking care of providence, they neglected their family to a certain extent. And I think that's something that even Sun himself like went through as well, right? But, you know, so I'm curious to, to see like what kind of experiences you've had with that because that's something that I myself have had to address and fix in the past too. And, and not just me, yeah, like even mentioning that, right? Like Sun Singham too, that's something he went through as well, right? Like he had to learn how to navigate, how to take care of uh, his brothers and his sisters and also his father and, and his mother as well and, and how to interact with them. Um, and so... Yes, um, we do have to take care of our loved ones and put an effort to do that directly as well. But I don't think that def that defeats the um, the uh, the 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 predicating thing that we're saying about like oh, but we should still help people for still this effect of of taking care of our family. I think you know we shouldn't throw that out uh, uh, while recognizing that we should also put more um, like direct. Uh, uh, energy into taking care of our, of our, of our family. Um, and so, yeah, it, that was just a very interesting thing. And so I mentioned that, you know, with the second generation, with this prayer condition, I pray for second generation. And I kind of hope that we adopt this mentality to some degree. Yes, we're praying to take care of the second generation and maybe in, in analogizing it and using the previous thing as like a parable, like layering it on top. Yes, we take care of the second gen because we do have to put in the direct uh, effort to take care of like our family. Right. But at the same time, we also pray for them because we're praying for all of providence. Right. And so I'm, I'm using this specific uh, prayer condition that we have. But for each of you guys, like I think there may be something slightly tweaked. Right. Maybe maybe for you, too. The question is also about second generation and and. Uh, and the whole of Providence, but maybe it's it's something else. Like maybe you're you're a campus member and you are are, are setting a condition for campus, or you're setting a condition for ministry, or you're you're doing X Y Z and, and and all of these things uh, for that department. But you're also doing it for the whole, right? And I think this is something that we know. Uh, but I wanted to specifically mention it today because I think it is important. And I think this is a way to think about it that is important, right? Like in taking care of the, the, the miniaturized, you're taking care of the magnified. By taking care of the magnified, you're taking care of the miniaturized, right? So as you help all of Providence, you are helping the, the specific things that are like your purview and the, the, the things that you're zeroed in on. And by helping... The smaller section, you're helping the whole too. And so like one of the ways that this, one of the times that this can be applied is if you like end up helping someone who is not part of your department or end up helping someone who, or something that is not your mission or not something that you were in charge of. Like, I think, you know, like people in Providence are generally helpful, right? But at times we also wonder like, oh, should I be expending my resources for that? But the the main reason why I bring it up is that there is nothing that you um that you do in Providence that will be a waste of your time, right? Because uh like a waste of your time as in like it it'll be to of no avail. Because it's it's all to help the whole, it's all to help the Lord, it's all to help the will, it's all to help, you know, with the things that God is doing in this history. Like, you know, of course, <laughs> we can use discernment in, in, in the precise things that we, we do. But I also hope that we can pray for each other like this, that whenever you find yourself praying, whether it's for second generation, whether it's for Milky Way, for SS, for campus, for career, for, you know, stars, right? In, 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 in all of that, that category, for leaders, for blessed family, for JS, for newcomers, for ministry, for something, for, for X and for Y and for Z, 
that will will understand just how it plays into the whole and how it plays into God's will, right? So we can't forget that anytime, right? So that's kind of it for the first segment, and with that, we will go into the first break for today. And I will <laughs> I will apologize because <laughs> uh, Rachel brought this up, and you know I'm I'm glad she did, and and uh, maybe I'm making some people sick too, but it, you know it's once a week, right? So I hope that you know that most people are not sick of this. Right. Um, she was asking. She was like, "Eddie, can you please change the, the the break music?" And I was like, "Yeah, I probably should." Uh, but you know, it's not to say that the Natural Temple song and the I'm Happy song are, are are bad songs by any measure, right? But she's like, "Yeah, Eddie." Like she was she was sharing with other second gen. She was like, "Yeah, Eddie keeps coming up with excuses every week for why." you know, he's using these songs and, and I'm like, they're not excuses, they're valid reasons. But, uh, you know, at the same time, I, I understand what she's saying. And so I apologize for not picking uh, new songs as of late. I will do my best to find more. Um, but for today, the break will be our beloved Natural Temple song. And to Rachel for what she said, um, maybe I shouldn't change it on purpose because this song is great. And I think it is something that we need to immortalize. And um, it's already been immortalized, um, I, I would say. But, you know, like we can continue to solidify, you know, what we do with the song. Right. And so, um, yeah, like with that, like this is one of the things that we uh, break down and build back up once again right and so uh yeah like even our conversation thus far about uh praying for the the part and praying for the whole like the, the reason why i mention is, is sometimes our affections and our love and our efforts for the the part or for the whole it breaks down sometimes right sometimes like we don't really care about one department like because we're like if we're a campus member sometimes we don't care about career sometimes we don't care about ss and sometimes we don't care about milky way and sometimes we don't care about blessed family and for js and uh, I'll, I'll say it very bluntly in that sense after kind of this first um spiel because all of our efforts tend to do with like a, a different part of providence and because of that like sometimes we don't even know like what the other departments are going through what the other pr people in our church even though we sit next to them even though we praise with them even though we run in various different missions we don't know and so things break down and, and at other times we don't care about the larger thing of providence the will the things that the man of mission is doing that that larger thing we don't really care about and uh, I'm not saying that we're apathetic towards it, but let's say like, you know, sometimes when we're like too focused in on our problems, on the small things, we can't see the bigger picture, right? We can't see what God is doing, right? And like, we can't see like what the word is talking about. Uh, and at those times, we may still be doing the small things. We may still be doing our missions. We may still be taking care of our departments, right? So like, I think we've been in both situations in both scenarios. And so whatever the case might be, this whole week's message and this 40-day um, prayer condition that we're starting right on for, for all of Providence is to be made perfect, is to repent for these things, right? And so because you guys are all here and we're able to have this conversation together, we're kind of at a place where um, this is not news to us, right? And this is a, a thing that we've experienced and learned. So now that we know, we can take action. Now that we know, we have to care for each part. Now that we know, like we can expend energy, uh, you know, taking care of maybe people who are out, out of our department and people whom uh, we didn't really think about before, knowing that it plays a bigger role in the larger picture. And sometimes if we're too focused on one thing and neglecting another, and not taking care of the larger will, then we can focus on that, right? And so this is something that we know. And so I hope that people become encouraged by this and become emboldened and, and courageous and brave about this uh, because this is something that we can uh, concretely do. And I think uh, the value of this is something that we realized before. Um, I will say that I think some of the people who uh, left Providence uh, weren't able to figure this out, right? And so a lot of their efforts went into one thing and they thought that that thing is everything. And I'm not saying that to uh, paint them in a negative light or anything like that, but I think it's just true. It's just objectively true, right? Because if you're only focused on one thing in Providence, you're not having all the considerations that God has in his heart. And of course, we can't do that at all times. But if we become more and more focused on just what our priority is, 
then naturally we'll forget the things, the other things that God wants, the larger things that, that God desires for, for all our problems. So with that, like we'll go into natural temple. Yes, this is a process of, of building back up what has been uh, broken and also of, of making things better uh, iteratively every single time until it is perfect. And so with that, we'll go into our song, Natural Temple. Thank you, everyone. 
uh, for all of that, <laughs> for sitting through it. Um, uh, and, and I'm not going to say sitting through like the song Natural Temple because that's, that's a great song. Uh, but, you know, as Rachel has barely brought up, maybe I should be uh, changing it. Uh, but for Rachel, I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I played this song especially because uh, you brought it up and I also didn't have time to uh, find another song. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, with that, yeah, like this week has been incredible, you know, and I wish I could have kept the video recording and, and shared it with everyone. And I definitely should. Uh, but yeah, in part of the, the previous conversation, like right before the break, um, you know, that's something that came up from the, the second gen um, prayer condition that, re, that that started the day before. But there were so many other things that happened in that time. And I don't know if I can just focus on one thing necessarily. But I'm trying to see if there's something that like we can um, quickly grasp and, and, and discuss. Ooh, okay, so while there's many things, let me kind of go into maybe the first thing. All right, like um, this week's, uh, I think the message was really powerful. And, you know, there were a couple things to note. Like, I mean, we say that every week, but there's there were a couple of distinctive things, right? Like first thing um, for me that was really big was something you mentioned how um, like the part about repentance, right? Then we're starting this 40 day um condition of repentance and i don't know about for each of you guys and i i feel like probably most people were doing a better job than me but praying really earnestly and perfectly for repentance is something that i definitely wasn't doing as much as i should have i think there was like this kind of this sense of like oh yeah like what we've been doing is enough and of course that i don't think that's the mentality that people were having but kind of in light of like even last week's message of like, oh, when you actually look at what we've, we've what, what you've been doing, you've only been doing like a third of what you thought you were doing. Um, and, you know, I think repentance is definitely part of that. But why repentance is so big compared to like all the other things is because uh, like we have to be made clean in order to do anything. Right. So if you are like taking action without repenting daily and without like cleaning up, then it's like you're trying to put on clean things on top, like clean clothes on top of like dirty, like on top of like things that are dirty and un un unclean. And so like no matter what you do, it kind of like makes its way into everything. It's like if you're trying to put in food into a dirty bowl, then could you eat that food? Right. If there's things that are rotting and unclean, like could you fill it with new good things and expect it to do something else? Right. And the classic example that we think of is like uh, a, a cup of water. Right. Like if even if you try to fill a cup with completely clean water, if you put in a drop of dirty water in it, then, you know, it's no longer drinkable. Right. If it had some crazy like brain eating amoeba, some bacteria, but it's just like a thousandth of a fraction, would you still drink it? Right. Like if someone you know, t took like a, a syringe full of, I don't know, like toilet water or even shower water into your cup of drinking water, would you drink it? And right now I would feel like, you know, like more than 100 percent of people would not drink it. Right. And so um, I think that really makes sense. Right. And and I'm sure everyone has been doing, uh, you know, uh, you know, their their due diligence. Like, uh, but, you know, I felt really convicted this week based on that, because, you know, it like what we're trying to do is the whole thing. And this might even go back to like the the analogy from before about praying for like the second gen to pray for the whole, to pray for a part, to pray for the whole. Um, it's the same thing. Right. Like repentance is so important to all the other things to the whole to the the fulfilling the purpose of creation as we know it uh, to to fulfill the rapture to fulfill god's will repentance is so important uh, because um, there are things that we haven't been doing perfectly right and you know some of those things might be very extreme like the things that something you mentioned especially to do with uh, sexual sin and purity and purity amongst leaders uh, but it goes into every single little thing right like different various sins that we can have and so those are things that we need to absolutely make clean in order to make sure that it doesn't affect the other things right it doesn't affect our ministry it doesn't affect our management it doesn't affect our personal faith it doesn't affect you know the the, the different things that 
that God is doing within our regions and within our church. And so repentance, like doing like the idea of doing it perfectly to do it like at a high level, that was something that I think was uh, was uh, relatively new and that I was very grateful to hear. Um, and, you know, like something was specifically said that he hadn't been bringing it up. The Trinity haven't been telling us like to repent in the way that uh, they did this week because he felt that we weren't ready, that we were like weak and that we were like, you know, um, <laughs> I forgot the specific verbiage that was used in the message, but like I I'm sure Pastor Sky talked about it yesterday too, that we weren't yet ready. Like he, he felt that we would be too burdened by it. We'd be too like uh, unable to handle the weight. But now was the time we absolutely have to be made clean because God has a will for this time and something that he wants to fulfill. So we really have to be made clean. So that, that was the first thing. And the second thing, and this will be the last thing for Bible Today and for this segment, um, and I will hand it off to Rachel shortly thereafter. Uh, but the second thing came up from the end of the message. And this is this was so interesting. And, you know, he, like, Sazim has mentioned this at some point before. I don't think that is something that we necessarily think about all the time. But one of the things that came to mind was that uh is what he mentioned um like towards the end of the message right and i think this is something that we've all been praying for and i really feel that this is an answer to a lot of people's questions and concerns um because everyone is thinking about god like what is god's will for my life like what should i do like what should i do in terms of like xyz in terms of my career in terms of family in terms of my mission in terms of the church in terms of where i should be and what i should do all of those kind of questions uh and if i'm hitting too close to home for for some of you guys uh, <laughs> i apologize but also i like i know you're thinking about it already too um, like, how should I do, like, for parents, how should I take care of my kids for uh, this week? What should I be doing? Maybe some of you have a pressing deadline and you're thinking about, like, how to do that, too, in the best way. And one of the things that, that was mentioned at the tail end of the message was that there are more than 10 ways to address a situation, to address an issue. Um, and, like, I think one that's already hopeful in and of itself. And that's something that we have to keep in mind. God and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Son. And, you know, and something they're telling us, like, don't worry so much. Because, you know, there's plenty of ways to handle something, right? There's not like a one size, like, fits, like, like, there's like, there's not like one very specific tool. And that's the only way to address it. Because sometimes I think we do get in that zone. And I myself have done that too. That being said, you know, of course, the best way to do it, which is many times what we're hunting for, but the best way to do it is according to the Trinity's thoughts, right? According to God's design. And that was something that was uh, mentioned yesterday. And so I think that that was the, the very hopeful thing, the thing that I wanted to bring up, um, because like, you know, uh, we were we we're talking about a lot of things like um, and we, we, you can apply to a whole array of different circumstances. Like one of the things that came up yesterday is like there's this newcomer who has been re learning really diligently. And so uh, the person who's been kind of lecturing um, this newcomer, like kind of like pitch to the table, like, hey, like, you know, this this uh, newcomer, they learned this lesson last and they're like this and this like this person is like this and this. What lesson would be good? And as soon as they pitched it to the table, everyone had a different answer for like what should be taught. And of course, like there, there was like a lot of overlaps and stuff. And I think everyone brought up like really great points. Right. And so I think it was very um, for me, even that's like encouraging. Right. Just the fact that like everyone has something to, to add and to contribute and to uh, to uh, speak about on this. Right. Because everyone like really had this heart of of love for this newcomer, wanting them to learn well, wanting them to, to know the things that they themselves wish they knew at the time or was shocking for them at the time. Um, and so there's like all of those kinds of different questions. Right. Um, and so that part in and of itself was good too. And the thing that the thing that I th th thought was important, especially in that context, right, is that as the message said, there is like more than ten ways to go about addressing this situation. There's like yeah, there's there's plenty of lessons to teach this newcomer. Um, and so like the thing that that um, 
that came to mind is that there's there isn't like a uh, or an answer there that was necessarily wrong. Like all of those answers could be correct. And I think one of the one of the the reasons why that's important is that as this group, as this church, um, um, giving all of these ideas, let's say a, a time comes where you know when we're actually teaching this person, and if everyone gave a different response. We can only really teach one of those lessons for the next lesson, right? Like, like, okay, maybe we can combine some of them, but generally speaking, we have to zero in on something, and you know, and you can maybe already <coughs> see where this is going, but you can analogize this to a wide array of circumstances where a decision has to be made, and there's like four or five different options that all equally seem good. Sometimes we can't do the specific thing that we thought was the best option that we that one person that we personally may have seen it. Uh, but this is something that's something I'm addressed in 2005 to the leaders. Sometimes you do have to push and you do have to pull and you do have to like kind of stake and, and hold your ground and stand your ground. But um, at times you also have to concede too, right? Because we all want the same thing and we all want the best thing. Um, and so it's okay if not everything at, at e each and every single moment go the specific and particular way that we discussed. Um, and that being said, of course, the best way and the best plan amid all of these ways and plans is God's design, is God's path. And this is something that Sunsing himself learned. And yes, going back to the natural temple thing, I hope you're listening, Rachel. <laughs> Just kidding. And everyone else who uh, may not have been thinking about the natural temple song too, too, too much. But this is why this is that example and that Sunsing has used it so many times too, even as of late, because even for something, this is something he realized because he himself went through this thing of having his own design and seeing how much better and how much higher uh, God's design was, right? For something, he like thought of making concrete steps and not just that. And I'm, I'm sure that you've seen these photos as, at, at a certain point, but if you haven't, go look for them. Um, they're in some of the books about what Ming-Dong in 2001 and in the past. And if not, if you don't have them, I'm sure someone can um, can help you uh, see them at a certain point or like you'll you'll definitely find them so just keep it in the back of your mind later if you uh, go to a bigger church or, or, or a place that has these resources like check to see what uh, what we don't used to look like and, and like think about it like now that you have this question in mind right like think about like think about what it looked like when they first tried to develop it um, and like one of the shocking images for me in showing this difference is showing what the experts try to do and what we try to do in the beginning using these small rocks and what that looked like that looked it looked terrible like it, it looked like the you know like when you go by the the shore and they have those rocks that are there to kind of block the the tide and and to break the tide as it comes in it looked like that right and so can you imagine that being a place where we sit down and give glory and like and 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 praise god like you may be able to do it kind of like a training camp and like like something that where you're just like going through a period of difficulty for the sake of going through a, a, a difficulty. But at the same time, like you would want something better. Like you wouldn't like look at that and be like, oh my gosh, like this is God's will. This is like the perfect thing. But like what we do have now instead is this ambition masterpiece and is one ring dong that's been made according to God's design. That is perfect. That is so much better than anything else in the world. And so that's why it's really that example. Right. And so, yeah, so I hope that none of us gets discouraged if like the, 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 the things that we desire um, the the ways, the ideas that we have in mind, and maybe the the, the things that uh, we feel are important aren't necessarily and expressly um, uh, like shown and and um, and done like right away. Like like for one, if you pray about it to the Trinity, at some point, the things that we earnestly ask for, just as with something we said, like sometimes like the dreams and the revelations that we have, it doesn't happen right away. Like with Joseph's dreams about, you know, the, the sun, moon and stars bowing down to him and the, the sheaves of grain, like bowing down to his, um, uh, his grain, like that took a long time to fulfill, but it happened. And the dreams that something we had about Wai Mingdong, even before like starting Providence history, 
it they all came to fruition at the time and i and i i specifically really mentioned this because i know that i myself have been guilty of this a lot right like being discouraged because an idea that we had didn't come to fruition uh, especially within providence or like like something a thought or a care that we had didn't seem like it was addressed but one of the things that i saw is that eventually those things um, became fulfilled it may not have happened exactly in the way that i thought it but most of the time when um, i stuck around and i uh, prayed about it and when it happened it happened in even in an even better way so it's not even that god will substitute what you have and be like no 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 no, no. like this is what we'll do instead but the thing that god gives you captures what it is that you wanted and gives it to you even in a better way. So as a closing statement for Bible today, I hope that none of us lose heart. Keep holding on to the things that we you 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 have, the hopes and dreams you have within Providence. Um, and also know that God will fulfill it in an even better way. And so that also may mean that we do have to prune ourselves somewhat too. Uh, and I think there's no one who won't recognize that maybe some of our ideas are not perfect, right? Because God's thoughts and his ways are way much more perfect. And Sun Sing is the first person to acknowledge that, right? With the ambition masterpiece and everything too. And so with that, we'll conclude Bible today. I really wish I could have shared some of the other things from the hurricane, uh, but I, I am like running late for, for school. Like I, I have like so much work to catch up on. Um, and so like uh, instead, I'll be sending you guys my love and my prayers. Uh, and, and with that, we'll be concluding Bible today and handing it off to Rachel with 2G Talks. I hear their words, what they observe. Look at his life. He is happy for sure. Yes, that is right. I know I live the most happy life. Happiness should never fade. It should last eternally. That is joy. Holy Spirit and Son, I'm really can say what they want about me their thoughts are wrong they don't know they don't understand although this path may be hard i will take this glorious path the path of life holy spirit and son i'm really Welcome back everyone to 2G Talks and a happy Tuesday to you. 
Hope you had a great weekend and start to your week. If you haven't already, please feel free to leave a like and comment. I'll be sure to do my best to respond. But for today's podcast, I actually wanted to start off by giving you all some very exciting updates. The first of which, if you're actually a part of American Providence, you probably already know this. But the first update is that Sunsonim has officially given his approval for American Providence to have our very own second gen department. We have had an official national SS department for a long time, and that SS department did a fantastic job for a long, long time. But this is also very exciting, having our very own second gen department because, well, because of many reasons, but especially because we actually have four second gens actually working as leaders for the department. These leaders consist of myself, uh, Educational Minister Eddie, Minister Heon, which if you don't know her, she's from Georgia, and Pastor Grace, who is from New York. I bring this up because during our many... (laughs) second gen leaders meetings many different kinds and i want to say almost complicated topics have arisen and from these many different discussions actually this is where the inspiration for my 2g talks came from and specifically it came from our discussion on the roles that we should have as second gen leaders for parents of second gen and this discussion kind of led to a gray area In general, as leaders, we understand the importance of having both sides of the family, right? The parental side and the second gen side. Obviously, if we're able to help the parents, then the second gen will be helped too. And if we can help the second gen, well, then that really helps the parents. But how is it that we can actively help the parents? What ways? What methods? And for that, we really didn't have an answer. So, you know, in the comments, if you're thinking about it, if you have any ideas or thoughts, please feel free to share. But, you know, I did go around and ask, just because I was curious, what are the resources that Providence parents have? And I realized that there really isn't any sort of parental guidebook on how to raise your child in Providence or like a step-by-step process or There isn't even someone who is in charge of that. And honestly, who would really be qualified to do that? You know, go around and tell parents on how to raise their kids. It's it's not really feasible. It's not really possible. But second gen and parents alike still need some sort of support, right? And it was during the Sunday message that we received. And there's this one sentence that I'll just kind of quote. So some said that to a problem, there's always 10 possible answers. But what's the best answer? It's the answer that's centered only on the Lord and on the word. And that was something that all the second gen leaders (laughs) that we could all agree on. For second gen, it is really, really hard to know Sunsinim. You know, know him personally have stories with him, have that emotional connection with him. It was our parents that actually had the opportunity to walk together with Sunsinim, to follow, to be beside him. And so because of that, they have that really deep personal connection with him. But for second gen or even members who have never met Sunsinim, sometimes we can find ourselves having a far less personalized and I think a more shallow emotional connection to Sunsinim because of this. Of course, everyone has the words. And Sunsinim always says, within the words, everything is contained. And this is true. But as second gen growing up, sometimes, when you've heard the word your whole life, you forget the value. And you don't always value them. And if you don't know Sunsinim's thinking or his heart, the then it can be really difficult to know his shimjong. Or what is it that he means when he says this or when he says certain things? So as leaders for the second gen department, we are really trying to make it a priority 
to share stories of Sansanen so that second gen alike can really come to know him and come to know his heart. So for my second update, with all that being said, this is actually what inspired my next announcement for today. I really felt inspired and wanted to start this mini-series within my 2G Talks centered around Sansanim's stories to again highlight his personality through people's past interactions with him. I haven't really come up with a name for this segment yet, so if you think of any good ones, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I'm also in the works of having guest speakers come on and share their own personal stories or even share their parents' stories that they've had together with Sunsidim. So again, if you're someone who maybe has stories with Sunsidim and you feel inspired to share, please feel free to reach out to Pastor Sky and hopefully we can schedule something. So to go ahead and just get started off with this new segment, I would like to begin by sharing one of my mother's many stories that she has together with Sunsidim. So this is actually a story that goes all the way back to when I believe Sansanim had his first American tour, which I believe was in 1994. And so this story is set on August 21st, 1994, and begins after our Sunday service, which was Sansanim's second day on his trip. Now, again, we're beginning right after service. And because it's right after service, my mother was still dressed in her Sunday attire a long gray and white striped dress with white heels. Now, if you didn't know this in the past, when following Sunsidim, it was incredibly important to be ready and prepared for literally anything. There was always a chance that Sunsidim may change the itinerary or the planned schedule. So because of this, my mother carried a large purple tote bag that just contained a variety of different things. She always carried a set of her cheer gear. She carried a set of swimming clothes. She carried an extra set of service clothes, shoes, garments, anything that you could possibly think of. She also had been given the mission of helping a member who was in charge of Sunsenim's medical team. And at the time, it just so happened that my mother was a certified CNA who had been practicing to become a nurse. And so the medical team rep placed her in charge of supplying all medical needs. Which really just meant that my mother had to carry around this massive box which contained all different medical supplies that Sunsidim might need. This ranged from a variety of things like saline solution, masks, bandages, and other medical materials. So you have, in one of her hands, a giant purple tote bag. And in her other hand, she's carrying this massive medical box. During this time, Sunsidim had decided to tour UCLA, which is just a university in California. And he wanted to walk around this campus before playing sports. And so they walked around for a while, looking at all the different sites, having a small tour of this campus. Before eventually, Sunsidim settled in a grassy field, and started handing out many different kinds of gifts. He handed out things like necklaces, signs. My mother even received a fan from Sunsenim, something that she treasures and holds on to even until this day. So, after Sunsenim had given out all the gifts, he once again got up and began walking, with a huge cloud of people behind him. My mother still remembers this day very vividly. She recalls how she walked for hours in her heels, lagging behind the rest of the crowd, dragging these giant bags, just trying to keep up with him. Eventually, she couldn't take it anymore. Her arms had started to burn. Her feet were blistering. At this point, she looked up into the sky and cried out in her heart. She called out, Jesus, Jesus, these bags are just too heavy. I can't keep up. I can't even be close to Sunsenim. What's the point? Suddenly, in front of her, the mass of people moved, as if the Red Sea had just parted in front of her. And all of a sudden, she found herself face to face with Sunsenim, 
standing alone before him. She was frozen. Everyone around her had moved out of Sunsenim's way so that he could see whatever it was that he was looking at intently. But my mother remained immobile. Without a second to spare, Sunsenim angrily started yelling and pointing at her, speaking in Korean. She couldn't believe it. You know, my mother doesn't speak Korean. So she has no idea what he's saying. She thought that she had done something wrong. Here she was, being yelled at by Sunsenim. She couldn't decide whether to faint or simply just die. But then, as if nothing had happened, Sunsenim turned around and kept walking forward. The mass of people now closely behind him again. In her confusion, all of a sudden, her arms became light and she could breathe again. Both of her bags had been all of a sudden stripped away from her, now being carried by two male members. She was shocked. There she was, praying and complaining to God and Jesus. And without a second's delay, immediately Sunsenim had responded to her. Somehow, he knew her heart. Somehow, he had helped her. And she thought about it. Did I say it out loud? Did someone tell him? And then she came to realize it was because she was speaking to Jesus. And it was because Jesus knew her heart. And so helped her. And so again, she realized, when you're close to God, only then will you be close to Sansadam. Because even though she was in the far, far back of the crowd, Sansadam still could feel her heart. Because God was always with her, and God is always with Sansadam. God only looks for those who shine their light. So when you call out to God, when you reach out for God, God will send someone. And he sent Sansanim for her. Especially after receiving Sansanim's verdict. As we all know, we know it's a minimum of 17 years, right? We have to be people who really know Sansanim's heart. And know God's heart. Right? Sensenim isn't someone who focuses only on himself. He is willing to live according to God's will. He is willing even to suffer in prison again. For us. For the righteous. And for the wicked. Because he genuinely loves both of us. He loves the righteous and he genuinely loves the wicked. He loves his enemies. Aren't y'all so shocked every time the message comes out? You know, he doesn't really talk about what's going on on personally with him and sometimes i wish he would but at the same time i realized oh Sansanim is really just so focused on god's will and entrusting everything to god that he's essentially saying you know all right god as long as i'm with you i'll do it all over again i'll suffer all over again i'll run for another 17 years of my life on the line And what is a way that, as brides, what is it that we can do to help God, to help ease Sansanim's heart? Well, we have to run. We have to run with Sansanim for the next 17 years, giving our everything. You don't want to pray? Too bad. Let's pray. Let's read our Bibles. Let's lecture. Let's evangelize. Let's make ourselves do it all because he does it for us. So I hope after listening to today's story, although it was a small and kind of short story, I hope that it can help you to realize a little bit more deeply that truly God works in spirit and he has to use a body. And that he's currently using Sansanim's body to love us, to take care of us, to be with us. And so for us too, We have to run together with Sansanim spiritually, being his body for the next 17 years and even onwards. So before I conclude today's segment, again, I want to continuously share Sansanim's stories, not just for us right now, but for the future generations, the second gen, the third gen, the fourth gen, the fifth gen, and even members all the way down 
500 years, 600 years onwards. So if you are someone who has stories with sons in them, no matter how small you may think they are, I'm really here to tell you that each and every single moment with sons in them is precious, as precious as gold. Every single experience, every single breath. I'm not always going to be here to share those stories with sons in them. I'm not going to always be here. So while we can still preach and testify, especially during this perfect opportunity of giving glory to God during this month of October. Please, please feel free to reach out and contact me so that we can testify for Sunsenim together. So with that, I'll go ahead and wrap up 2G Talks for today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I hope that we can chat next week too. Yeah? Can I stop me when